Today I wanted to explain a little bit about how we build fertility in organic systems uh, for food production. Um, the best way of all is if you've got lots of acres is to have uh, grass and clover together with various other herbs growing in your fields which you graze then for maybe two, three, four years, maybe even five years. And then uh, you, and that could be with sheep and, and cows, ideally both, because they eat different things on the field and maintain a much healthier grass sward if you do that. Um, and then you've built up masses of uh, organic matter, quite a bit of nitrogen from the clover that was in the field. And when you plough that over, add, if necessary, small amounts, especially for the heavy feeding crops, you would add small amounts of composted farmyard manure and, uh, and away you go, you will have wonderful vegetables. That works extremely well in the big farms and a rural situation, but we're an urban market garden. We have very limited acreage. Uh, at the, uh, we only actually have eight usable acres for tillage and we're using six of them at the moment and we're going up to eight next year and so we have to maintain fertility slightly differently. Uh, how we do that is a combination of two things. The first is when we plough uh, as in this field, some fields we don't plough, we have minimum tillage, but what we do then, even after minimum tillage, when, when, the, when the crop is cleared off the beds, we apply compost. Uh, we're extremely lucky. Uh, we get lovely, well-made uh, compost um, and well-rotted compost, which is spent mushroom compost. It's made from a combination of, I think, 80 or 90 percent straw, uh, combined with animal manures, and that's what they grow mushrooms on. Um, John McArdle from Armagh, who grows mushrooms on a large scale, also supplies us, is really happy to be able to allow us take what we need, and we take about, I think, 80 tonnes a year uh, so, uh, from his farm and spread it in our land, and it's, it's wonderful stuff because it also has gypsum, which is a form of lime, which when combined with clay really makes the clay particles very easy to break up, and this stuff does wonders to a clay soil, and we're on the clay soil, but that's not enough on its own. We can't just rely on compost and so we we do what's called green manuring and you'll see here in this bed behind me this uh, it's early now in the summer so we're only starting to green manure. Uh, quite a few beds were sown earlier this week which haven't come through yet the seeds are just put in the ground as were these put in the ground maybe I think it must have been about three four weeks ago and this here is called a green manure. It's crops that uh, we grow after cropping another crop. There was early spinach in here, cleared the bed with mechanically, I've got a machine that will just bury everything and make it like it was a brand new bed again. And I was able to sow then these, these different plants in all once and it's just broadcast sown with, a, again, a machine that I push. Our scale is small enough that I don't need to tow it behind a tractor, I can push it by hand. And it drops the seeds along. And then I go over with the bed maker again, very shallow and work the seed in, walk away and this is what you get. Now, this is, um, there's three different things in here. The first one is buckwheat. So that's buckwheat. Uh, buckwheat's wonderful because um, it, um, it grows very vigorously, it, it smothers out the weeds and if any weeds came up, and there are a few probably in here, but they won't survive because the buckwheat will smother them out. And the wonderful thing about buckwheat is it has an incredibly extensive root system and it is potassium hungry. So it will scavenge any potassium that's locked up in that soil attached to other minerals it will scavenge those incorporate it into its growing and then when we then break that crop up and plow it back in or in our case it'll just be mechanically worked back in very shallowly with a tiller um, it then it then releases not alone all that organic matter for the earthworms and the protozoa and the fungi that live in the soil but uh, and keeps them healthy and growing but um, it also releases the potash in a form that's available then for plants to make use of that aren't as capable of, of, of scavenging it as 
buckwheat is, and and so therefore that's how we 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 we, we ensure a lot of 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 um, potassium in the ground. Now, in terms of trying to get some nitrogen into the soil, uh, we don't use artificial fertilizers. We use the power that we harness the power of the sun through photosynthesis, and we sow uh, a plant from the pea family. So there it is. It's quite hard to pull out out of the brook. It doesn't really matter. It's vetch. It's known as vetch, common vetch. Uh, this is a cultivated variety of common vetch. And in its roots, uh, it has a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria that forms nitrogen nodules. It's taking nitrogen out of the air, down through the plant, into the soil. And we can, uh, we can get up to 100 kilograms of nitrogen per acre by growing this densely on the field. So that's how we get our nitrogen. And then we, we also want to diversify it. We don't want it just all that. So we also grow Phaechelia, and that's a plant with a lovely blue flower that again, a bit like the, the buckwheat, it's, um, it's very vigorous, so it'll uh, compete extremely well with anything else, including the other two green manures I've got in here. And it produces a blue flower that's very, very beneficial to insects, especially bees and hoverflies, hoverflies uh, and, and, and other wasps, which are really important that we maintain, we feed them and maintain the populations because they're, our, they're what achieves our pest predator balance. Uh, by that I mean if we have uh, green fly or black fly in a crop of lettuce or broad beans, the hoverflies are predators on those. And what we have found by uh, growing crops that feed the predators, such as the hoverfly family and the wasp family, um, we have reduced our populations of, of uh, black fly and and green fly phenomenally on the farm to the extent that it's rarely a problem for us. It's only a problem if we make a mistake and plant too early or do something silly with the soil that is not actually giving the plant what it needs. Um, and I'm glad to say we don't do that much anymore. Occasionally I made the odd, odd mistake of rotivating too early maybe, uh, being impatient to get out and it's not quite dry enough disaster. I've made pottery for that year and it takes, nothing's going to grow properly in it so it takes a year for that to recover uh, and a crop like this will completely redeem that situation uh, within, within just two months. So this was sown a few weeks ago it's, um, it's going to grow to about up to here which is about two to three feet then I will cut it again with a machine in the back of the tractor and I will probably then because I don't need this till next year I will sow another green manure in here for and this, that won't be a summer green manure it'll be a winter green manure and it'll be a mixture of rye and uh, and vetch again but it'll be predominantly rye the rye grain because it has a voracious root system that um, that is able to to um, is able to uh, you know hold all the nutrients that we've created in the ground and is a wonderful protection for the earthworms. Uh, it's the same here with the summer green manures. All these green manures are great for earthworms. Bare ground is a disaster for earthworms. It gets too hot, they go down. If it gets too wet, they have to abandon it um, because it gets too wet for them. So if you create a mulch like this, a living mulch over it, it regulates the wet and the dry. And so the earthworms on the heat come back up again and, when it, and then we, it never gets too wet, um, even with, unless it was a flood or something, it never gets too wet if you've got a green mulch. It's only when it's open ground, it gets wet and compacted and it's really inhospitable to worms. So always keep something green growing on it. So I hope that's helped you understand just a little bit of some of the techniques we use to care for our soil.